Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com with a kind of new format that I want to try and get off the ground. And I think that you can see, just by looking at the title alone, that there's going to be a fair few WTF moments abound. For you see, video games, I absolutely love them as much as we all do. They can make us laugh, they can make us cry, they can make us recoil in fear and disgust, but amongst all of these emotions are times where video games can make us just go, <laughs> what? And it is just such a series of shocking moments that makes up this first episode, because we've got examples of video game greed causing us to raise eyebrows, boss battles that bridged fantasy and reality in rather uncomfortable ways, and of course, a little bit of titillating embarrassment to boot. So let's gather all of our wits and then promptly lose all of them, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video game moments that made us say, what? Hope you enjoy it. Number 8. Feeding Strawberries to Babies in Hell – Shadows of the Damned I, I feel like I could just leave this title as it is and just be done with this entry, but yes, you can, in Shadows of the Damned, feed babies that are in hell strawberries. It's a weird game. Now, to give this some context, the babies are actually infused into doors that block your path, and the only way to open them is to appease the ugly little blighters with some fruit. But the whole act, the idea behind it as well, is just so uncomfortable. I need to take this very delicious strawberry and place it into the mouth of this ugly little goblin here to open a door. I don't want to do that. What happened to keys? Keys were fine. And you know what? Things get even worse when you understand why they love strawberries. For you see, strawberries are actually made of ground up tongues and were a practical joke by Lord of Demons Fleming in order to mock humanity and force them to eat something truly disgusting without them realizing. Cheers. I never want to open a fruit salad again. Thanks. Number 7. Unlocking Sexy Heather – Silent Hill 3 So as many of us are aware, the Silent Hill franchise preys upon our internal fears, manifesting them in gruesome boss battles and just horrible, horrible enemies that make you just want to say, ooh, no thanks, I'll be getting off on the floor below on this elevator ride, thank you very much. Silent Hill 3 was no exception to this, mixing imagery of consumerism alongside fears of, well, rape and forced impregnation. It is not pleasant stuff in the slightest, but that in turn is what makes the series so formidable when it comes to making the player experience fear. And it's also what makes unlocking the sexy Heather outfit from Silent Hill 3 utterly jaw-dropping. For completing the game and inputting a code into the newly unlocked costume selection screen, you could deck out our hero in a costume reminiscent of Sailor Moon. And if you killed 333 enemies, you'd be able to combine this with the Heather Beam for a <coughs> sexy beam. Noish. Which sees you banter off enemies with lasers, all the while an unseen woman whispers, Sexy beam. Imagine how uncomfortable that would be if that just cropped up in your day to day. Like, I'm just here, just painting some models or whatnot, and it's just somebody in the background going, Sexy. It's not the only game that does it as well. Have you ever played Gitaru Man? Every time you start the game, it just has this woman going, Oh, Gitaru Man. I want it as my ringtone, to be honest. Number 6. Charging you money to change your hair colour. Dead or Alive 6. So microtransactions have always been a good source of… what? Within the gaming industry, with publishers finding ever new lows for which to try and raid our wallets, but Dead or Alive 6? Well, it took things to almost parody levels. This is truly the cream of the crap, thanks to its almost ludicrous amounts of cosmetic DLC, which also includes a ridiculous example of charging the player to change a character's hair colour and then having the gall to charge you again if you want to change it back. You're paying to not unlock the hair colour for you to just swap between as you please. No, 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 no. You are paying for the right to change the hair colour. You are renting the hair colour. That is ridiculous. And to put this into perspective, there are 460 pieces of cosmetic DLC and four, four fucking season passes. Jesus Christ. It seems like the punchline to a bad joke, but nobody except Tecmo Koi seems to be in on it. Number 5. Punching the Boulder, Resident Evil 5. 
So the Resident Evil series has always carried with it these cheesy B-movie tropes. And you know what, fans, myself included, absolutely love these. We love the over-the-top dialogue. We love the holes that are in the map from all of the scenery chewing. It's just what makes it Resident Evil. But still, there are times when things go from being A to A. <laughs> Yes, things veered dramatically towards shark jumping territory when it came to the final moments of Resident Evil 5. Now, to put things into perspective, after the world was set alight with cheers and praise for Resident Evil 4, Resi 5 had so much pressure on it to do well that it's almost no wonder that it snapped. After all, how do you top what many agree to be the best in the entire franchise? Well, apparently you just knuckle up and punch some boulders. Yes, that's right, we're talking about the now infamous moment where Chris, I swear I'm not on the juice, Redfield punches a boulder into a lake of lava in order to rescue Sheva from Albert Wesker. It is utterly ridiculous, as has been shown by the myriad of reaction compilations on this very scene, and it left many players just howling with WTF laughter. Oh yeah, before I begin the next entry, spoiler alerts for The Last of Us 2. <laughs> Number four, the fate of Joel, The Last of Us 2. How is it that we all knew that this was coming, that everyone predicted this, but at the same time, still made for one of the most shocking moments in gaming in recent memory? We'd all surmised from the trailers leading up to The Last of Us 2's release that something had happened to Joel, seeing as he was mostly absent from them, but at the same time, we never seemed to allow the thought that one of the most iconic video game characters wouldn't return for the sequel. His death was a shockingly grim example of actions and their consequences, not to mention the notion of revenge and how concepts of right and wrong are written individually rather than prescribed universally. It was jaw-dropping for sure, and one that left the gaming world stunned. However, as effective as this gaming moment was in making us just go, what? There was actually a second moment of, what? <laughs> this time thanks to the gaming community. In a rather horrible display of anger, many took to social media to flood forums with hateful comments about the game, and especially this moment, and then began harassing voiceover artists and even the game's developers. It wasn't a good look and left many of us just going, what are you doing? Calm down. It's just a game. It's a good game, but just a game. Let it go. Number three, Scarecrow's Fear Toxin, Batman Arkham Asylum. As the Dark Knight of Gotham, you've got to be prepared for weird being your new normal. After all, when you're fighting oversized and over-muscled lizards, mystical ninja clans, violent toy makers, and of course, horrifying murderous clowns, you better get on their level. And while the Arkham games do make you, and box quote incoming, feel like the Batman as you punch goons like they were made of cardboard and float around the city like you were in an angry parade balloon, there was one moment, above all, that made you realize that Batman might not be as invincible as we first thought. After a run-in with Jonathan Crane, aka the Scarecrow, we lose track of the wiry little bastard thanks to him stabbing us with his horrible needle hands. No biggie, right? I mean, we'll just shrug it off. Oh wait, why is the game freezing? Why is it restarting? Have I just been shot in the face? What? It is a horrible moment of pure madness that leaves us reeling for hours afterwards and making us not trust anything that we see from that point onwards. It's a pretty powerful moment. Number two, the fake out ending, Ghosts and Goblins. The Ghost and Goblins games are just some of the most challenging, rewarding, and frustrating experiences that I've ever played as a gamer. And it's one of those franchises where it feels purpose designed at every step to push the player to their limits and beyond. And it's no wonder that the franchise has seen a lot of love from the speedrunning community thanks to the intricate, intricate, precise movements that you need to make in order to get through this, even on the regular modes. But this leads me to talk about the ending, which, um, well, it made me scream what in between the words, the f is going on, f you, you fucking game, I fucking hate you, f you, you fucking piece of shit. Because Capcom clearly wasn't content with just slapping you in the face with endlessly respawning enemies and dangerous platform navigation, because in the original title for the NES, you could experience a true moment of frustration if you completed the title without using the Holy Shield to defeat Satan. 
Not that you'd ever know to do this, but by beating the final boss without the weaker, slower firing weapon, you'd be led to a title card that says something to the effect of, Hey, well done, lad. You've done really well to get here, but <laughs> here's the twist. Satan's been a cheeky wibbit, and he sent you right back to the start, because this castle, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. You've got to play through the fucking game again. You know what? If I listen closely, I can almost hear the sound of my controller crunching in my hand just seeing this image again. And number one, Psycho Mantis's mind reading powers. Metal Gear Solid. So Metal Gear Solid on the PS1 is pretty much the Bret Hart of video games. It is the best of the best. It is the excellence of execution. And while other video games in that franchise have gone on to do bigger and some would say better things for me, it is my original sweetheart and Metal Gear Solid is just pure mwah, chef kiss for so many reasons. The action was intense, the story was complex, but not fully disappearing up Kojima's asshole at this point. And of course, we had classic moment after classic moment thanks to the brilliant stealth focus gameplay and utterly memorable boss battles. However, it goes without saying that at this top of the House of Cats, great joke there, Jules, was Psycho Mantis and his ability to read your memory card and also make your controller vibrate a little. What are you doing? Stop that! Stop it now. Now, as a lad who had plenty of Konami titles locked away on that little plastic memory card, it felt like a true invasion of privacy, and I genuinely thought that a prank was being played on me. What a fool I was, for it was just Kojima flexing his creative muscles once more. Nevertheless, it definitely made me and probably countless other players just go, what? And then we go, my friends, those were eight video game moments that made us say, what? If you'd like to see this series continue with me doing boss battles, enemy designs, levels, music choices, anything else that made us go, what the hell is going on? Then let me know down in the comments section below as I'd love to do more of these for you lovely, lovely people. As always, I've been Jules. You can follow me on socials at RetroJ over on Twitter, or you can go to Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. I want you to stand there and say, what? to yourself. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Am I okay? Do I need help? These sort of simple questions can lead to bigger conversations and actually might allow you a bit of perspective to refocus your energies onto things that you actually have control over because there is nothing worse than just trying the same thing over and over again. I've just hit my microphone, but I'll carry on. Trying the same thing over and over again and not being able to change it because of forces that are outside of your control. Treat yourself with love and respect because you bloody well deserve it. Go out there, rebalance your energies and just be kind to yourself. That's all I can ever ask. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Peace out.